<clears throat> morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. We are live. Happy Mother's Day to everybody out there, all my sisters, aunts, friends, relatives. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you're having a great day. Um, before we go any further in today's study, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. You are not only Lord, but you are God. God manifests in the flesh. We thank you for this day. Lord, we know that all things are of you and your purposes stand fast. None can stay your hand. You have absolutely predestined, ordained all things to come to pass. We don't understand it or comprehend it, but we apprehend it because your word tells us so. You are the, the living word, God, not the letter, but the word, the Logos, Lord, Jehovah, Yahweh. You are all. Christ is all. Thank you for this time in your word. Lord. Open our eyes that we might see and our ears that we might hear of the things of God, of your glory, your majesty your mercy and grace towards your people, your people. And not only that, your goodness in the land of the living, your providence, how you provide for all of your creation. Lord, help us to understand that that's just who you are. Many people wrongly see this as a blessing because they have things not knowing that as goats, they store up wrath against themselves in the day of judgment. Hang on a second, you guys. Nico, come here. Come here, sit down. Come here. Come here. Over here. Down. Lay down. Lay down. Yeah, my dog's sneaky. He's sneaky. So sorry about that. God bless you. Two times. But yeah, Lord, we ask that you would help us to hear. Another thing that men say is that they need to hear the preached word. It's true in a sense, but the preached word is God himself, the voice of many waters. You must reveal yourself to your people. You're, you're the word. That's hearing the word, not hearing a preacher say something, because men say all kinds of things. Christ came. The word was alive. He came and spoke to the nations, to people everywhere that were in his vicinity. When he spoke, they didn't hear him. They tried to kill him. This is spiritual, not natural. Everything that God does, we can, he, he's invisible. He's the invisible God, right? He was manifest in the flesh as Christ, as a person. We look to you, Lord, to reveal the Godhead, God, to us. We thank you for this time, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so moving on. Last week I spoke about, on verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. I believe it was about a perfect man, right? Unto the measure of the statue of the nature of the fullness of Christ. Now listen, remember, pay attention. Christ is all. You see it on pulpits, right? You hear people saying Christ is all, but then they say he's one of three persons. Listen, if God is one, you cannot have three persons being separate Equal, equal, which is the same and distinct. No, God reveals himself in his word, the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, right? The word of the Lord. Jesus is God, okay? 
So, the perfect man is Christ. Because what? He is the God-man. Emmanuel, God with us. We get that from the Old Testament. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Yeah, it's funny that these tripersonal men, tripersonal, they, they, they call themselves Trinitarians. The true Trinitarian, right, recognizes and has been taught the unity, oneness. That's unity, right? United of the Godhead, not God's. There is one God here, O Israel, the Lord, the Lord, our God, the Lord, our God. He's called Lord. He's called God. Isn't that what Thomas said to him when he put his hand in his side? My Lord and my God. Only God can receive worship, right? God is one. There are three that bear record. The scriptures tell us that, right? Even Jesus said, I and the Father are one. How could they not be one? He's the everlasting Father, right? The fullness of the Godhead. This is what the scripture declares. Not what men say, not what creeds say, or confessions, or man-made orthodoxy, right? What has been determined by men. God determines what's true. He alone is the source. Didn't Christ tell Philip? When he was asking to see the Father, he said, I, he didn't say he is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. How could you not? The Father is in him. I am in the, I, I and the Father are one. I am in him and he's in me. The Godhead, the whole Godhead, not part, not one third, right? One third didn't come here, all of him, okay? So Christ is all, remember that. He's the perfect man until we all come in the unity of the faith. That's not going to happen until we're in heaven. Because down here on earth, hey, Cain slew his brother Abel, right? Now, they had, they had been taught and probably knew the truth in the letter about God, right? Because Adam was taught. He ate from the tree of knowledge, and he knew that he was not God that he was man, that he was of the earth, that he was destined to die, right? He found out what was ordained for him because it is appointed unto man to die. After that, the judgment. Yet at the same time, Adam was not judged as a sinner because the Lord had made clothing of skin for him, right? Which typified a sacrifice. Behold, this is what John the Baptist say. Behold, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world. Of his people, mind you, right? His blood was shed for his people alone. There are so many lies, doctrines, teach, which is teachings of demons and of men that have been spread across the face of the earth since Adam and Eve were created. The, the, the serpent beguiled Eve, right? Eve was fooled first. Adam wasn't fooled. He knew. He was told. I believe, personally, that he obeyed because he didn't eat. He wasn't deceived. He knew. But as a type of Christ, Adam was a type of Christ, right? He, whose, whose Adam was a type of Christ, his bride was in him, right? Eve was his bride. She was in him. She was taken from him. Out of him, just like the body of Christ. Listen, the body of Christ. We're not called the body of God or the body of the Holy Ghost. We're called the body of Christ. Children of the Most High God, right? The one God. It's amazing how men say he's three, but he's one. If he's three, he's three. If he's one, he's one. I am God. There is Before me, there is no other God. That's what the scripture says. And guess who this God is? Jesus Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Like I said, that won't happen until we're in heaven. But all of God's children are taught of God, right? We have the Spirit of Christ in us, the Comforter. He's also called the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, right? 
on the Spirit of God. But God is a spirit, right? He's invisible. Christ is the express image of the invisible God, right? Till we all come to the union of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. He's called the Son of God as a mediator. Listen, every single title that we see, excuse me, in Scripture or in the Godhead, right? The Godhead. Father, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Now listen to this. 1 John 5, 7. And the three are one. How can three be one? God says it. It is written. It's written. Right? The three are one. So the Son of God is a title of the Messiah, the Anointed One, Christos, Cross, Christ, both Lord and God, the Savior of all men. Who saves people? Salvation is of, does it, does it say salvation is of the Father? In Jonah 2, 9, salvation is of the Lord, right? He saves, he shall save his people. It doesn't say their people. Listen, listen, that's a little nugget right there, okay? Because if there are three separate, equal, and a stake, who, who does what? Now you got to give, now you have to give, uh, what's the word for that? Now you have to give each person a different function, but yet they're all one. When we see anything happening in scripture by God, it's the Godhead, right? And they're one. They're united, right? He says they're one, not me. He says they're one, one alone. Jesus Christ, the God-man, like I said earlier, Emmanuel, God with us. That's what the scriptures say. You will not find anywhere in scripture, the scripture declaring that God is three persons. No, you don't. You don't. Men infer that. And not only that, this letter, these words, the letter killeth, the spirit giveth life, right? The spirit of Christ. If any man hath not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his, right? Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. His, not theirs, right? The Son of God is a messianic title. Unto a perfect man, he's the perfect man. He's holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. He is full of the Spirit of God. He's God. Why, why wouldn't he be? He's not partial. I have a brother in my seat that, we need to study that word, fullness. Well, personally, I think fullness is full. For example, and I use this all the time, this glass of water that I have, it's not completely full. Right? If it were full, it'd be up the top, spilling over. I'm going to drink some more. I'd say a third is about here. <clears throat> okay, you see that? Probably about one third because it gets bigger as it goes up. It's about one third in here. This is the God of men. There's two other persons in here that they say are God, separate, equal, and distinct. Get it? When he tells us about himself that he is one. That's a monster. The world has, oh my gosh, thousands of religions, right? In so-called Christianity, well, why is it why is it called Christianity? Why isn't it called Holy Ghostianity? You know, or father fatheranity, you know, <laughs> right? Christianity, in so-called Christianity, modern Christianity, false. Christian. They have three gods, right? Now, the world's religion, whether it's uh, Hinduism, um, they have what's called polytheism. They have multiple gods, right? You look at Greek mythology, how they say what Zeus was supposed to be, you know, the, the supreme god. 
you got Poseidon, you got all these different gods. We see in scripture one God. Doesn't didn't Jesus say all power in heaven and earth is given to me? It already was his, right? It already was his. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2, 5. Who, being in the form of God. Now we're talking about a person, a physical body, right? Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Of course not. He's God. He understood that. He, he, he knows all things. Okay? He's the perfect man. Now it says, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Down here, what does Paul tell us? What does the, the Spirit of God tell us in a word? We know in part, right? And we prophesy. Prophesy in a language that people understand. Not these people babbling and, and mumbling. Some people call it baby talk. They, they, they say they're speaking in tongues. I, I'm not against tongues. Hi, Gabby. I'm not against tongues. What I'm against are false tongues, just like I'm against false doctrine. Hey, if you're blabbering, you're the same thing that I've heard thousands of other religious zealots babble and say it means different things. I don't know how many meanings Baba, I thought Baba's father, right? Right. And, and like, for example, in Farsi, Baba is his dad. You're saying, and then they're interpreting these, or someone else is interpreting these, and these charismatic, Pentecostal, holiness, all these different assemblies, right? Even uh, 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 Calvary chapels, I've heard that before. You know, Calvary chapel churches. People do this because they believe it impresses other people, right? Oh, that sister is holy. They pray a lot. She's a prayer warrior. Prayer warrior. Woo! Prayer warrior. Like, well, what am I? If I'm not a prayer warrior, this is nuts. Okay. I believe in tongues, but real tongues. And God gives them as he sees fit. When he sees fit, you can meet a person, right? Who speaks a different language. And I've heard stories of it. And the Lord caused you to say something that glorified him, not glorified you or magnified you and what you think your gift is. Because that's what people do. They show off. Look at athletes. What do they do now when they dunk a basketball? Woo! Everybody's hot. Or score a touchdown. Or hit a home run. That's what it's all about. Celebrating, right? Celebrating what someone else did. You take that same principle, that same manner of, of, of the way people do things, and now you put it in religion. So you got praise and worship leaders. Leaders, so-called, right? Woo! You know, praise the Lord, saints, you know. Somebody give a shout unto the Lord. Some give me an amen. They're, they're, they're directing people like a choir director. What to do? Now the lead is further in worship. They're telling you all these things, right? That's supposed to be godly. No, 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 no. Anytime you've ever read in the scripture when someone was in the presence of the Lord, they fell prostrate, right? Or when Christ spoke to the men who came with Judas, Nico, come here. Nico. Come here. Sorry, guys. They fell back because that was a judgment motif. Like, right? Motif. Type of, of language. So now listen. God himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit of the Lord. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. How can doesn't say where the Holy Ghost is, there's liberty? Or where the, the God the Father is, there's liberty. Listen, God's one. When we hear of the Father, when we hear of uh, the Son, Jesus, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, we're talking about God. God is one. He says he's one. He does not say he's three. Nowhere does he say he's three. Why do you think all three, I have to say three, because they're, they manifest as three different manifestations, right? Father, the Word. The sun, well, that's even, you can count four. I don't know. Some say not seven, nine. The seven spirits of God in Revelation you read about, right? When we see Christ in the scripture, what do we call this? The word of the Lord. We even say the year of the Lord. Now it's, I think it's 
something else. BC, before Christ. Why does it say BG? Before God. Before Christ. You get it? Now, another thing I want to touch on regarding denominations and modern day Christianity. It's constantly morphing when the Lord himself says, I am the Lord. I change not. Jesus Christ, right in Hebrews, the same, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. I am the Lord. I change not. I believe he says that in Malachi. Let's see. Let me get it real quick. Malachi 3 6. Okay. All right. So moving on. <clears throat> the title of my sermon today is that we be no more children. Now, this is Old English, right? King James Version. Modern versions say what? Then we will no longer be infants, New International. New Living, then we will no longer be immature, like children. English Standard, so that we may no longer be children. Berean Study, then we will no longer be infants. So that no longer we might be infants. Berean Literal, right? New King James, that we should no longer be children. New American Standard, as a result, we are no longer to be children. NASB, I think that's New American Standard Bible, 1995, so it's a, re a revised version. As a result, we are no longer to be children. The older one in 77 says, as a result, we are no longer to be children. Amplified, so that we are no longer children. And it says, spiritually immature. And that's, right. that's, what, that's how children are. Children are immature. They need to be taught. We teach our children. Scripture tells us as parents to raise our children in the fear and admonition of who? Of the Father? It says of the Lord, right? Then we will no longer be little children. Then we will no longer be little children. Christian standard, Holman Christian standard, American, that we may be no longer children. Aramaic Bible, neither shall we be children who are shaken and troubled. Contemporary English. We must stop acting like children. You get it? Don't act like a kid anymore. There are many believers who are childish. And now we all can be childish. Childish. Newborn babes. Young. Mature. Because we have a sinful nature. That is the only nature we have. We don't have two natures. We have one nature. Now, we have a new man in us, right? And who is he? Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's the new man. He's the perfect man. He's the one that's being renewed. Because he doesn't change. But for us, he's being renewed in us. He teaches us. He guides us. He comforts us rebukes and corrects us. Nobody likes being corrected nowadays. We have a snowflake mentality. You tell somebody they're wrong, hey, it's on now. Now they hate you. They curse you. You know, you can't, you can't, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? You can't tell anybody they're wrong. They hate that. No one wants to be wrong. But guess what? They're wrong. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. that we be no more children. Let's look at some other verses here. Isaiah 28.9. <clears throat> Isaiah 28.9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Now, notice how the scripture is not saying they. Whom shall we? Whom shall he? They shall all be taught of God. It's written. 
right? Who teaches? What does the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, teach the Lord? He said he only speaks of Christ, right? Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. But the word of who? Verse 13. The Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, the Lord, right? The word of God, the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God, right? That's what we said in the Catholic Church. This is the word of the Lord when they read, when they read scripture. Okay. Children, that we be no more children, tossed, right? Tossed to and fro. This is what happens. You can confuse a kid. Because they don't know. You can tell them a lie and they'll believe it. And that's what people do everywhere. They're liars. Let all men are liars, right? Romans 4 3 or 3 4. Let me see real quick. It's Romans 3, chapter 3, verse 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as is written. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So all men are liars, but God alone is true. And what does Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right? He is. Not we. He. And surely not me. Right? I can say things. I can share things. I can share what the Lord has taught me. Right? That doesn't mean you're going to get it or you're going to know it. Because... The same God, the same Christ, who's Lord over all, teaches his people about himself, right? Who he is. Blessed be the name of the Lord, right? Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. He came, okay? Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Let's go to Hebrews 13, 9. I want to share these things with you about teaching, right? Hebrews 13, 9. Jesus Christ, I was telling you that earlier, the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. Do you know people say that Jesus was created and begotten. That's what the Russellites say. They call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. They're not. They're false witnesses. Jesus told the Pharisees, Moses wrote of me. Jehovah, right? First five books of the Bible, they're about God. I am. I am that I am, right? His actual name, what it is called, is the Tetragrammaton. J H W H. They combine two other words to make it Jehovah, right? Same thing with Yahweh. There's no nouns. It's all consonants. His name. He is. He has always been. What does it say in Hebrews? Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. The Alpha and the Omega. There can only be one, right? Why aren't the other two saying, hey, wait a minute, man. You're one third of of me. I'm I'm also that guy, and so am I. But we're separate, we're equal, and we're distinct. No, 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 no. God's one. When we see him in scripture, we see the unity of the Godhead. And the Godhead is a mystery. Paul even said it. And men say he's a mystery, but then they say, oh no, this mystery is three people. No, 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 no. He says he's one, he's one. I'd rather stand by what his word says, what he says, right? Than what by men say. So don't be carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. 
teachings, right? You had the first century uh, church and apostles battling with the Gnostics. They were all about knowledge. It's all about knowledge. And that's what people think, that they're ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Who's the truth? The Lord is the truth, right? The Pharisees were steeped in the letter. They had teachers. They had the, uh, uh, they had the Torah. They had the Mishnah. They had all these different things, right, the, that the rabbis were studying. They had rab, rab, rabbinical schools. When they said, who is this Jesus, this kid, teaching us things? He, he teaches like no other, and he has authority. He's the living word. That's who he is. But people are turned away all the time by doctrines, right? Strange doctrines, just like uh, Nathan and Abihu offered strange fire, right? When they came against Moses in the Old Testament, when the children of Israel were led out of the wilderness to the promised land, they said, hey, who made you a priest? We can be priests too. We're from the same nation. And that's what people do. Well, you know what? I remember a friend years ago saying, yeah, yeah, you should be a preacher, man. You make money. What are most, what are most of these wolves doing nowadays? They're fleecing flocks. They're getting a following to follow them. Look at all these humongous Gigantic mega churches and mega church ministries and leaders like like Jake's, Copeland, Dollar, Osteen, thousands of people flock to see them or flock to pay to see them at conferences, buy all their merchandise. What did Jesus do to the money changers in the temple when he went in? He made a whip and he drove them out. He said, My father's house, right, which is his house, should be a house of prayer. But men will constantly try to make money off of everything. God as well, you know. Like I said, when I first believed I was converted by something I did, that was a false conversion. You know what I did? <clears throat> Bought a Bible, read it. Every single day, almost. If I wasn't working or exercising, I was reading that thing, right? And I bought all kinds of shirts. Witness shirts, right? I remember my fit, favorite one was 2 Timothy 1, 7. God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind, right? Uh, I had all kinds like of different scriptures on it. So that if I wore them and people said, hey, what does that shirt mean? You know, And I believed some of the strange and false doctrines I was taught because I wasn't, I wasn't uh, quickened at that time. I thought it was. That happened 13 years later, 2009, right? I thought I was. All I was doing was being taught strange things, and I believed them. And I followed a multitude who all believed the same thing. And we had a leader, right? And they, hey, these people are well-meaning, right? They're sincere, but they're wrong. God alone is the one that teaches me. If you believe everything a man says, <clears throat> you should be concerned. We have to test everything. Scripture tells us to test the spirits, whether they're of God or not, right? Don't believe every spirit. Paul, in his epistle, told one of the assemblies that the Bereans are more noble than the Thessalonians, because they, they test these things. We're supposed to test them. And we ask the Lord for wisdom. We don't just claim it, you know. We ask him for it. That's another thing religious people do. They, they are, uh, what's it called, presumptuous, right? The blab it and grab it, just believe it and receive it, say it and do it, claim it, name it and claim it. All of that stuff. Telling their children from a young age, you're God's child. We don't know. God must tell you that. I can't tell you that. Now, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ in his people bears witness of the children of God. That's what the scripture says. Right? But we can also be fooled. That's why he's saying in this scripture that we be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. Right? Look at Matthew eleven seven. Matthew eleven seven. 
What's up, Big Mike? Matthew eleven seven, And it says, As they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, Because John was in prison, right? He sent two of his disciples to see Christ. And he said, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up. You who are dead in trespasses and sins hath he quickened. That's in the book of Ephesians. Right? Let me ask you this question. Riddle me this. Can a dead person do anything? Can a dead person make a decision to receive Christ? Accept Christ? You're dead. Hey, you can kick a dead person in the face. He's not going to feel it. What do we do to dead people? Bury them in the ground. Right? We don't keep them alive. Because they're dead. Blessed is whosoever shall not be offended in me. Christ talking about himself. As they departed, this is verse 7, and as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, because a lot of people followed him, but they followed him for the goodies, right? Fish and the bread. What went ye out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? Because John was... To most people, he seemed crazy. Camel hair on, you know, and walking around eating locusts. What went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? That's what we see nowadays. These, these people are in suits and ties and fancy dresses. Or their religious garb, gigantic robes. I remember going to conference and, and a bishop was there. Guy was a bishop. He had a fancy hat, like a kind of like a king, king's crown or a chess piece, you know. Collar, a long robe from head, to, from neck to toe, right? Collars, and he was popping, man. You're like, dang, that impresses people, right? I have a friend who sells this stuff as a clothing line. It's crazy. A man clothed in soft, behold, they that wear soft clothing is italicized or in king's houses. Yeah, kings, they fare sumptuously. They eat the best. They're dressed the best because they're kings, right? They rule the land. They do. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. John the Baptist. That's what the scripture tells us. Okay? Now you have Romans 16, 18. This is what happens with Deceitful men and women. Romans 16, 18. In verse 17 of chapter 16, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses. Contrary. Listen. You're going to always have. Hey, what's up, Steve? They're always going to have uh, divisions. People are divided. Hey, I have friends and family I love. They're Niner fans. Like Steve. <laughs> I'm a Raider fan. We're divided. But they love their team. I love my team. It's the same way in Christ. Because we are all at different levels, which is where the Lord wants us. We believe things with our natural mind, but the natural mind can't understand. It's not until the Lord reveals his truth that we understand. We have a better understanding. When I was a child, I felt like a child. That's what Scripture says in 1 Corinthians. Okay? Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine, the teaching, which ye have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not, does it say the Father or the Holy Ghost? It says, serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words, right? Jesus loves you. God loves you. Jesus loves everybody. Jesus loves all children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. We are precious in his sight. You know, Jesus loves the little children of the world. Like the song, right? He does not. He loves his own. Just like us. I don't love all the kids in the world. I probably 
hate some, you know, they're stinkers. Some of these kids I see and interact with every day in my neighborhood, in my community, they're horrible. They're disrespectful. They're foul. Cussing out adults, disrespecting adults, no respect for authority, right? Flipping people off, busting people's property, destroying our communities, tagging people's houses, tagging the walls of people's property every day. We don't. How can I love someone that does that kind of stuff? If it was my kid, I'd love him, but I, hey, I discipline him, tell him, hey, you don't do that crap. Okay? Their own belly and by good words and fair speeches, deceive, deceive, deceive the hearts of the simple. I remember when I was a kid, if you were called a simpleton, that means you were stupid. You were dumb. But now, you can't call someone stupid, even though they are stupid. Isn't that uh, in that movie, Forrest Gump, stupid is and stupid does, right? People do stupid things. Why? Because people are stupid. I do stupid things. Ask my wife. Talk to my wife. She'll tell you how dumb, how stupid I am. Thank God, not all the time, but I don't know if it's more than less. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we're learning. Nobody knows it all but the Lord. The Lord knows it all, right? So we're taught these things. And now he gives us gifts to, to build up the body of Christ, right? Till we all come in the unity of the faith. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Of the saints. Not to get money for themselves. I think I told you guys before, I used to, you know, when you're up watching TV late at night, you got cable, you got a gazillion channels because you're paying 200 bucks a month for your service. You see some crazy stuff. Like this uh, one false teacher, Mike Murdoch, right? He's like, send me some money. I'll give you some anointing oil. I'll send you some anointing oil. I'll pray over it personally. I'll lay my hands on it. And, and then you use this anointing oil. You anoint people. I anoint you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Really? So I'm supposed to put my trust in this oil that this man is selling to people. And, say, you know, and then it has all these testimonies. Well, after I bought, you know, Mike Murdoch's or Peter Popoff. Peter Popoff's the guy, right? One another guy, right? After I bought his oil, I received a check, $33,000. And they're all poor people that are testifying, supposedly. So that's telling you, well, if I buy this oil, the same thing's going to happen to me. Or you get clowns like T.D. Jakes, right? You have to uh, sow. They use biblical terms, too, to make it sound even better. Sow into this ministry. And the Lord will bless you. 100 fold. Isn't it amazing how they use biblical terms to serve their purpose? These are the ones. The, and, 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 and people who are even believers, who are immature, who are children in faith because they have not been taught well. They can't discern between truth and error. They haven't exercised the word, right? And that's in Hebrews. Let's, let's go there really quick. Paul's saying in Hebrews 5, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered. Hard, hard sayings. Just like, dude, you just cut me off in an intersection and I was there first. I had the right of way. Oh, no, no, no. You can't correct anybody anymore. That's how people are. But listen to what Paul says. Hard, hard to be uttered. Seeing you are dull of hearing, right? You can't, you don't get it, right? You know, you tell someone something and they don't get it. They're like, they're, they're dumb. You can't say they're dumb anymore. That's offensive. When a dumb become offensive, but a homo, a homosexual is sacred. You can't call someone a, a fag or a homo or queer or gay, but they can call you the N-word. They can call me a spick, a taco binner. They can say all kinds of horrible things about people, but don't say nothing about them. Isn't that crazy? How much sense does that make? It doesn't make sense at all. For when the time, you ought to be teachers. He's talking about the church. The Hebrews, right? He's speaking to the Hebrews. Paul is. For when the time, you ought to be teachers. In other words, you should know better. When you learn something, you can teach it. I learned how to cook a little bit for my mom so I can make it. And I can teach my daughters that or my wife. Or I can teach other people. You know, I live stream a lot when I'm cooking. And I, I try to share my life with others and say, hey, it's not hard to do. 
Read the instructions, find out, watch videos. It's stuff that I can't do and don't know how to do, I watch DIY videos. I fix my furnace up in the attic, right? My furnace. There was electrical and, and there was gas and there was a part that I had to do. And I messed up a couple times, but I still fixed it. And I saved hundreds of dollars, right? I fixed my washer by watching DIY stuff. I fixed my, my oven, the broiler in my oven. Things I would never do before. A lot of people are scared to learn. But when you do learn, hey, they share it. Something make money. That's why they have businesses. Guy knows how to cut a lawn. You hire him to cut your lawn, right? Guy knows how to clean. You know, we hire house cleaners. We hire all this help. We go to car washes. Listen, Paul's telling them for what the time, for when, for the time, you ought to be teachers. You have need that one teach you again. The first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk. What does Peter say in his epistle? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God that ye may grow thereby, right? And Paul says, and are become such as have need of milk. I and mean, we give milks to infants, right? Babies. That's all babies do is eat milk, whether it's breast milk or formula, milk. You don't give a baby a steak. You don't give a baby a hamburger. They don't even have teeth, right? How are they going to chew that? Although I know toothless people that eat food <laughs> and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. It doesn't say that they're non-believers or heretics. They're just unskillful. There's a lot of unskillful people. Hey, I've worked with a lot of unskillful people. I, I'm not the greatest worker when I was working, but I worked hard. And I was, I, I, I worked hard. I gave it my own. I was responsible. I did what I was told. I wasn't raising hell, right? For he's a babe, a babe, as newborn babes, right? Be no more children, that we be no more children. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Listen, those who by reason of use practice, practice, practice. Practice make perfect, right? The more you do something, hopefully, the better you get at it. Or you can be doing it wrong all the time, <laughs> not knowing how. Until someone teaches you who knows how. But now you can't teach people stuff. Hey, man, you're going down the wrong way. There's a cliff over there. You don't tell me how to drive. You can't tell me where to go. Who do you think you are? Okay, so you're telling me who do I think I am. I'm trying to help you, but you don't want to listen to me. Okay. Ah, they go over a cliff, right? They go in a hole or they crash who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil, right? What did Christ say? Be wise as a serpent, the gentle as doves. We have to discern that we be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. There's all this crazy stuff. Crazy stuff like you're not a believer, right? You're not a child of God. You're not an eternal vital union. We're not taught that. In religion, we're taught. I went to a meeting last night and my heart wasn't right, but I made a decision to receive Christ. Now I'm a child of God. I did something. But wait a minute. The scripture tells us that the Lord has made all things, even the wicked, for the day of destruction. And that he has made out of the same lump of clay, talk about mankind, humanity, vessels of mercy and vessels of wrath. We don't know. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord stands assured, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. We don't. We don't always know. We're fooled. What did John say in his epistle? They went out from us. They were among us, but they went out from us because they weren't of us, right? People leave. People cause divisions to draw others after themselves. Paul told the Ephesians, the uh, guys in, in, uh, in Ephesus, he said it in the book of Acts. Let's go there. I believe it's Acts 20. <clears throat> Take heed, therefore, Acts 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost, God, right, God, hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. See how God always works as one? You got the Holy Ghost and God. Which he hath purposed, purchased, 
with his own blood. Wait, the Holy Ghost has blood? God, the invisible spirit has blood? Talk about the Godhead. Talk about Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there'd be no remission of sins, right? Salvation is of the Lord. You get it? He shall save his people from their sins. He hath purchased with his own blood. A ghost don't have blood. A ghost is a ghost, right? For I know this, verse 29, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, listen to this. You got wolves, wolves coming in, right? They always will. Listen to this. Also, of your own selves. They were of us, right? They were of us, but they left us. They were among us, but they left us. Of your own selves shall men arise. Women too. Speaking perverse things to draw away what? Disciples after themselves. Fullerites, Andrew Fuller. He's got Fuller Seminary, right? He's a Fullerite. He's an Arminian. He believes that men can make themselves a child of God by what they do. And that God loves everybody. And that you're, you are not in eternal vital union, but you don't become a child of God until you do something in time. That's crazy. That's crazy. These are the things. And immature people are tossed. Children are tossed to and fro, carried about to every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. Hey, men are, there are some slick dudes out there. You ever go to a baseball game or a football game and you're walking in, like, or you leave, you leave your seat and you're heading out to the bathroom or to the concession stand. There's always those guys there, right? They got a little table and they got the, they got like bowls or something. And they're shuffling them around. You got a crowd of people. You know, everyone's got the money. Most people are watching. They're saying, okay, tell me where the tell me where the, the pebble is or whatever it is that they have under the bowl. And they're moving it around. They're moving it around. And then they'll say, you want to try it? You know, da, 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 da. you do the first one for free. And then you find it, right? They're like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm watching them. The, the, the sleight of hand. Magicians. That's what they do. They fool people all the time. They don't tell the tricks. These guys are the same way. And then they get you for money. Like, oh, man, I thought I had it. You lay down a five, you follow him, you follow me. He's not watching, not watching, now he's talking to you and he's moving. And you're watching, now watch. And then he's got three, three things, right? Just move, move, moving them all around, shuffling. Then you go, and then he stops. He goes, okay, which one is it? Point to the one. And you point, and it's the wrong one. You're like, oh, five bucks, right? It's a, it's a, it's a game. It is the sleight of men. Cunning, craftiness. Crafty means, hey, there's a, what do they say? There's a, a a thousand ways to skin a cat, they say, right? People are fools every day. So we are, as believers in Christ, we are to be no more children. What does that mean? That means, God bless you, as children, we should ask the Lord to teach us. If we are all taught of God and he teaches us, we ask. We spend time in his word, right? And it's not like reading volumes of it. You can read volumes of a book and not understand anything it says, right? God has to reveal his truth to you. It's best to read a little bit and pray and ask the Lord, hey, show me what this means, please. That's the only way you're going to learn. You can, you can read a passage of scripture your entire life and not know what it means. And guess what? It's been happening for centuries because people think they know they can quote they've memorized the whole bible but yet they do not know god the same men who you see in matthew 7 let's go there real quick <clears throat> now listen to this <clears throat> you shall know them by their fruits our fruit is christ we bear he produces. We do not produce fruit. There is nothing good in us. That means the only thing that comes from us is death, right? There's none righteous. No, not one. Our deeds are filthy rags before menstrual cloth, right? What do women do when they have their period and they use a, a pad or a tampon? Throw it away. What we think is good that we bring to God, we think we bring to God, <clears throat> it's nothing to him. 
Our righteousness, our fruit, our good works are what he has placed in us, what he has imputed his people with. There's a big difference, right? <clears throat> Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. A corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. That's all we do. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. That's Christ. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. That's us. Every good tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. It's their doctrine, what they profess, what they believe, what they stand for. Now listen to this, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, right? Jesus is Lord. I love the Lord. Do you love Jesus? Right? Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord. This is the Lord himself telling us. Because remember, I told you earlier, people always say that the Lord loves everybody. No, he doesn't. Jacob have a love. Esau have a hated. He hates workers of iniquity. He hates liars, right? Look at the six things, even seven, that are abominable to him. Feet that are quick to shed, shed lies and blood. All these different things, right, that he hates. He hates. He does not love. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But listen, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. That's him. In heaven and on the throne, who's seated on the throne? The Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Jesus. Not thrones. I had a brother tell me, uh, there's thrones in heaven. No, there's only one throne. One God, one throne. What are we reading? One faith, one body, one spirit, one spirit, not three. One calling, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who's above all. One, not three, separate, equal, and distinct. One. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Whether it's in tongues or earth, yea, thou shalt be an arrow in the hand of the Lord. He shall shoot you out into the nations. I've been to those things. I've been to those conferences to see those nuts. Let them lay hands on me and believe I was anointed. Oh, you're anointed, brother. Believed all that crap. People believe it. It makes them feel good about themselves. And then they exalt the person doing that. I went to one conference one time. This woman, this lady who was supposed to be an apostle. Ooh, she came in a limo. She was escorted in the building. She had bodyguards. She had a full-length mink coat. Bobby Joe something, I forget her name. In the service, she was slapping people in their head. Bam! And people were laughing. But when she came to the post of the conference, the pastors, and my pastor at the time, oh no, she didn't touch them. No, no, you ain't, you ain't slapped me. In, you know, you ain't slapped me like that. Ah, keep stepping, sister. You know what I mean? Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils. They're saying they did these things, right? And in thy name done many wonderful works. He didn't say you didn't do them. What does he say? What does he say? I will prepare, I, and then will I profess unto them, I, not we, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, right? That's how it is. So children can be fooled. We can be fooled all the time. Hey, grownups can be fooled, right? If it weren't for the grace of God, the scripture says even the very elect will be deceived. All the way to the end. But no, it's not so. Why? Because we are kept, not by what we know or what we do, but we are kept, listen, by the power of God. That's how we're kept. Not by what we do. We can't keep ourselves. It's not in a man's heart to direct his path. We can't, we don't even know which way to go, right? The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like rivers of water, he turneth it. Whithersoever way he wants. And he puts wicked men in charge of nations, right? He does it. He's in charge of everything. The wind and the waves and the, the sea, they obey him, right? Men will deceive you. They lie in wait, just like a, a predator in the jungle, whether it's a lion or a jaguar or any kind of animal that kills other animals that's carnivorous, right? They wait. You watch a lion stalk a you know, whatever they are, gazelle or deer. They're, they're still. 
barely moved, right? Crawling through the bush. Out on him. Right? It's the same way. We're supposed to grow up. And God does that. He gives us the hunger and the thirst for him, for his righteousness. He does. We don't. We can't stir up the gift. He stirs up the gift, right? He is the giver as well. So I'm going to end here because uh, it's gone for a while already. And I've, I've pretty much touched upon all the scriptures. There were more. I can go over them, but it's it's been a while already. And uh, I've got things to do. We all do. So let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time in your word. We continue to ask and pray that you would teach us. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. We pray for your people. We pray for all men, but especially for your people. Those who are the body of Christ, the children of God. We who are in eternal vital union with you. We whose sins you have propitiated for and you've forgiven us. You don't bring them up before us. As far as the east is from the west, you remove them from us. Past, present, and future. We have a clean slate only in you. That you indeed are all. Help us, Lord, to, to know you, to understand you. Reveal your word to us that we might grow in the knowledge and grace of you and be strong in you and in the power of your might. Your might the power of your mind, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Help us, Lord, not to be deceived. Keep us. Give us wisdom to look to you, to be slow to speak and quick to hear. Most of all, quick to hear you, Lord. Quicken us according to your word. And we thank you. We continue to pray for the your children, Lord, all over the face of the earth. That you would keep us, that you would provide for according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit, Lord. We thank you for your people that we can comfort one another, serve and help one another. We pray for the cities that we live in. We pray for our families. And our friends, Lord, knowing that all things are of you and your will is being done and will be done. Nothing can stop your purpose and your plan. Lord, we just ask that you would indeed be merciful to our loved ones. We don't know those that are yours, who you have, whose names you've written in the Lamb's Book of Life before you created the world, Lord, but you know, and our desire is to have family and friends with us one day in eternity, but that only happens at your discretion. It is you that will have mercy on whom you will and compassion. It's it's not our will, Lord, but it's your will that trumps all things. Um, please keep us the rest of the day. Help us, Lord, to honor you in all we say and do. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, everybody. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And once again, happy Mother's Day. All right. Have fun. Bye. Oh, we're leaving in 45 minutes?